What if some of the world's biggest problems and issues could be solved by some of the world's smallest science? What if some of the science fiction that you see in superhero movies is actually science fact? What if we change the language that we use around our little girls and instead of telling them that they're pretty, we tell them that they're smart? My name's Michelle. I'm a nanotechnologist. I'm an engineer. And I'm here today to share my life story and some engineering principles to explain how you can build a superhero in just five easy steps. Step one, believe in your dreams. Better than that, surround yourself by people who believe in them too. So every story has a beginning, and mine starts when I was a little girl. People would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I said, I want to be a superhero. <laughs> and they would smile and say, uh-huh, you'll grow out of that. They were like, who would you like to be like, Wonder Woman? And I'm like, no, I want to be like Batman. Because Batman builds his own gadgets and he's just a regular guy. I want to grow up to be a superhero just like Batman. Again, people looked funny at me. And do you know what they did? They told me, that's okay. You're pretty. You have beautiful eyes. What I wanted them to say was, wow, look at the intricate design on that super galactic spaceship that you just built out of toothpicks and straws and sticky tape. <laughs> so my dad sat me down and he said, Michelle, tell me why you want to be a superhero. And I said, Dad, I really want to change the world. I want to help people. And I really, really, really want to build a machine that flies. <laughs> and so he did what every great parent does. He believed in me. He took my hand and he said, OK, take this. And he handed me a soldering iron. And he said, if you're going to build a flying machine, I'm going to have to teach you how to rewire circuits. <laughs> Step one, have a dream and surround yourself by people who are going to give you the skills to make that next step. Step two, if you believe in something, stick with it, because life is hard. And there are going to be times when you want to quit because you cannot see how you're going to make it through. But stick with it. Superman was Superman. Spider-Man was good at sticking to things. Spider-Man can use his hands and his web powers to climb up walls. Well, I'm going to take inspiration from a different type of stickiness, the gecko. The gecko is an incredible creature, and it can stick to pretty much any surface. A gecko can balance its whole weight on just one toe. And if it puts all four feet on the ceiling, it has enough stickiness to support itself and you as well. Really? <laughs> So, geckos are incredible, and lots of scientists are trying to understand how a gecko does this. One company called Gexkin are actually creating a material that combines both soft and very stiff fabrics to act like the bone, the tendon, and the skin interaction in a gecko. However, I've decided to take a different tack. So, if you look at the toes of a gecko, gecko toes are covered in millions and millions of little hairs. And we know that these little hairs can also help with the stickiness. It's not a wet stickiness, it's what we call dry adhesion. So you can stick to something and you can pull it off. Now with the help of Emilio Callias from the Callahan Innovation Center and Tim Miller from Victoria University of Wellington, we're using a high resolution 3D printer to create artificial gecko hairs. And they look like this and they're tiny, and they're amazing, and we're playing with things like the aspect ratio and the materials. These are made out of polymers to create sticky surfaces. And hopefully very soon you'll be able to go out and buy them so that you too can get some tape that you can stick hard to your goals to. Step three, protect yourself from danger, but don't forget, you've got to go out and take some risks. Some of my biggest successes in life have been from some of my biggest risk-taking. I don't blindly jump off a cliff. If I'm going to take a big risk, I'm going to make sure that I'm protected along the way. Captain America has the right idea. Captain America has an amazing shield. It's made out of a fictional metal called vibranium. 
vibranium, according to comic books, actually absorbs energy on impact, and that's how it's almost indestructible. So obviously, I needed to go build myself a shield. So in conjunction with um, Tom Allen and Dr. Mark Bately at the Center for Advanced Composites Research at um, Auckland University, I went and I built a shield. So I didn't want a shield made out of metal because it's too heavy. I actually designed it out of advanced composites. And so what you see here is a mixture of carbon fiber, advanced technical foam, and a whole bunch of fun in a lab. And what I was able to do is measure how tough it was. Because how much energy a material absorbs is its toughness. And there's only one way to test toughness, and this is my favorite part of being an engineer, and that's to break it. So first of all, you have to pick your materials. And there are some materials that are better than others. If a material shatters into pieces, breaks very easily, or delaminates, that is not what you want to build your shield. But it's good just to do it, to have a little fun, and test it. However, if your material can take a huge amount of impact force, and while it's actually happening, it actually doesn't shatter. Instead, it just deforms and it buckles. That way, instead of having something shatter in your face, your shield will just dent and buckle and still protect you. This is what I was going to build my shield out of. Oh, and here it is. <laughs> so what you can see is I now have my own shield. This is actually created from carbon fiber on the top. There's an advanced technical core in the middle and carbon fiber on the bottom. What I love about my shield, and the reason why I think it's better than Captain America's, is because this shield only weighs 600 grams. That's 21 ounces. If I made this same shape and size of shield out of metal, such as mild steel, it would weigh 16 kilograms. That's 35 pounds. That is not something I want to carry around. 600 grams I can hook onto my handbag and take with me anywhere. <laughs> so this is my protection, because if I'm going to take some big risks, I'm going to protect myself. What I've thought about, though, is actually calling up Tony Stark and helping him gen uh, generate the new Iron Man. And what I want to tell him is actually, you want to remove some of that iron out of Iron Man. Because if you want something lighter and tougher and faster, you should probably make carbon fiber men. <laughs> actually, being invisible can allow you to create a space to think and reflect. And that's really important, because we live in this world of craziness. I don't know about you, but I have emails and texts and phone calls and a to-do list that is longer than I can see the end of. And what I found about myself is that I'm naturally an introvert. And what that means is I work best when I can sit in silence for periods of time and just think. And there are lots of times when my day is so busy that I just wish I had an invisibility shield that I could surround myself in and just sit in it, just for a little bit. And then, when I'm ready, I'll come out and I'll come talk to you. <laughs> but I just need a little bit of space. Being a nanotechnologist means that I can move atoms into places that they don't want to go. And so we have this new type of material called metamaterials. And metamaterials are actually materials that would never happen naturally in real life. And they're materials that we've taken the atoms of and we've forced them into places that they don't want to be. Metamaterials react very differently with light than natural materials. I can see you and you can see me because light is bouncing off me. Light is either being reflected, some of it's being absorbed, some of it's being scattered by all my wrinkles and my dimples and the things that make me me. You know my shape, you know my size, you know my color because of how light interacts with my surface. Light travels as a wave, and the speed that it travels is different from air through to water. You can do this simple experiment. You can put a pen into a glass of water, and it will look like it's bent. You can put a spoon in, and as you look, it looks like it actually is bigger than it really is. You can all do this at home. What's happening is the light is traveling at different speeds. It does that because air and water have a very different refractive index. And so they travel at different speeds through different medium. What we can do with metamaterials is we can match the refractive index to make something appear invisible. 
Inside this bowl is some water. And also a whole bunch of solid balls, which you probably can't see. Because the refractive index of them is matched to that of the water. Meaning that in air, you can see them because the light bounces off them differently than it does when it's matched with the same refractive index of water. And so invisibility is just how you play with light. And metamaterials actually are just about creating a material that can either have a near zero or almost a negative refractive index. So you can control what you think light is going to do what it actually does with the material. And that is the power of invisibility. Right now with metamaterials, we can only do this at a very small scale. But hopefully very soon, we're going to be able to make this big enough that I can sit inside and just have some me time. <laughs> Step five. Superheroes have weapons. Thor has his incredible hammer. The Green Lantern has his ring. The Silver Surfer has a surfboard. I think the most powerful weapon that any of us can have is knowledge. One of the biggest problems we have is that when anybody mentions education, we think of children, we think of institutions like schools and universities. Education is for life. Knowledge is something that we should be gaining every single day. I would never have got to this point where I am if I wasn't always asking questions. Why does a gecko stick? How does light react with materials? Can I really build a shield today? Without asking those questions every day, I'm never going to further my knowledge, and I'll never be able to develop the science that I can. So my opinion is, actually, everybody needs to be asking questions all the time. And we all need to be moving forward to increase our knowledge about how the world works and why the world works, and making sure that we're making informed decisions. So for me, the most important power that all of us can have and the power that's going to change the world is actually knowledge. And so, hopefully, you'll be able to see that. <laughs> it's five easy steps to build a superhero. Batman once said, it is not what's underneath. It is what you do that defines you. So go do something super, because a hero is just a person who takes on an obstacle with their inner strength, their personal shield, and a drive to move forward by gaining knowledge. I'm actually here to teach you about how each one of you can create your own superhero in five easy steps. Thank you. <laughs>